Well, today's been a bit fun. I went to the basement and found uh, this stack of paper, those old drawings that I made when I was a kid, had fallen off a shelf and uh, into a puddle of water. It's pretty wet stuff. Now, a lot of these are little design ideas for game designs, and these ones are animation cells. Well, not really cells, but they're frames from an animation that I made years and years ago, which I believe I already have these digitized, but, you know, good idea to redigitize them. And then these are from, like, every little screenshot I could find back in, like, 2008 about Wally, -E, and I would go through and develop my designs because I was trying to build a Wally -E robot. Getting into the more um, actual schematic -y side of things. But it's really interesting how the ink really bled through. Like this is a shadow from this. And that covered over. Uh, let's see. That is a schematic design of his fingers. Yeah, side view. And that is a drive motor, and that's the mechanism which has the like the, the track. This is the bottom of him. I'm not sure what this is. I keep finding these. I guess that was the animation I failed to finish. I don't know. Oh, and there's also all these old bits and pieces of the World Wide Web back in 2008. So we didn't have internet, but we had internet at my dad's company. So I'd go to his his business and uh, I'd find some web pages. I'd print them out, then I'd take them home and read them. So I have like game guides for Super Nintendo games and all sorts of stuff. Now that's a side view. Um, let's see, one fifth scale of Wally, -E, including the uh, pads. And that, of course, is a shadow image from that. And um, that's a side view. Uh, not quite sure. That's a motor front view. I, I you know, it's a little. Kid. I was a kid. I, I wanted to make like a comic because a lot of these were made between the, the showing of Wally -E and the time it actually hit DVD. And so, like these were all taken from the teaser on the Ratatouille video game, and uh, just screenshots from a little unlockable easter egg in the Ratatouille game. This is an outline of a full full scale um, head. What's really nice though is if you freeze the frames on those you get a very nice selection of pictures that you don't get anywhere else. And so like you get side views of the mechanism for the, for the trash compaction. You don't get anywhere else, and no one else has really seemed to uh, notice that. Here's a few geared motors that I was looking at, because at the time we didn't have as quite a wide selection of uh, motors, but I was looking for at really small motors for his fingers. Uh, more frames of the thing. He's just starting to dry out. And that's all frames from that. Uh, I was trying to work on like stretch and squish animation. And I was also just trying to figure out how to draw. Although my father might have drawn that, I'm not quite sure. It's the start of a storyboard for something. Rain, sleet, or snow. That's for uh, hacking the Atari controller. And then on the other side is um, Yara's Revenge and Atari high scores. This is where they're coming out to. Thin ones are drying quite a bit more, but to be honest, like that's still salvageable. If I put that in between two pieces of glass, then this will seal up really nice and good enough to scan. But again, it's interesting the colors that blood through. Uh, let's see, this one had a lot of blue in it, and that just went through the entire, like, deck of paper. 
Now here are the ones that are still wet. You can see they're, they're dripping on the back there. But yeah, these are pretty wet. And there's still like probably 20 or so pages there. You know, one nice thing. I'm still gonna go. Oh, those two are done. Those two are done. So the, the thinner the frames that I made from the animation are getting done. But what I've learned from this, I mean, because to be honest, it's not that interesting of a paper. If I lost it, I would feel bad because I let it get destroyed, but it's not that interesting. So it's a good, a good excuse to learn more about the preservation of things that might get wet. And one thing that I've noticed is with these, they're too heavy because, well, like, um, I was not doing it anymore. A couple of them, like these ones, are too heavy for the paper. And so what they want to do is they want to pivot and they actually put a bend or even tear the paper. The wooden ones work better, but I would recommend, because it's always a good idea to have solutions on hand if you find some paper that was wet, getting some of these and maybe snooping off the backs of them, I'm not sure. Good enough. Now I'm interested to know, um, oh, okay, so I was worried the paper might stick to glass, so glass is, is another good option. It's only taken about maybe 20 minutes to dry out. It also is a very dry day, so that is lucky. Pretty good though. I would uh, I would definitely recommend laying it down as a way to dry it out also. Now I tried to get it to actually use the water to stick it down, but that didn't seem to really work for it very well. But just an idea. Now this is a rubber roller from a uh, Heidelberg printing press. Let's see if we can use this to help us. I'm already fucking it up. To help uh, smooth this out and see if it gets a better result. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, oh yes. Now this might be the way to go. And we can see how it dries to see if it's any better. Oops. Oh, yes. That's not doing it. God damn it.
pretty good, but not great. These ones were airing out for a few seconds already. Now, if it's really important and it's not going to smear anymore, you might be to use this method to re-wet something and then stick it to the glass and then let it dry. But that's only if it actually dries. Looking like some of the other papers might pull up a, a bit and re-wrinkle, so it's, it's kind of difficult. Now that I've saved this stuff, it's just a matter of like looking through it all. Like, a lot of stuff here. I drew a lot as a kid and um, had a lot of projects. I was pretty creative. I like that. I'm not sure if this is my creativity or not, but I can't find anything about it online. So here goes. You're gonna make it big no matter where you are. You're gonna live a good life. I know you're gonna go far. Could be an astronaut to the moon or Mars. Could be a millionaire with a hundred cars. But whatever you choose, you won't lose. Because I know you're gonna go far. I actually don't know what like tune that had. I don't even remember writing that. I probably didn't write it. Who knows? But it doesn't have my spelling. So I wrote that. But I'm not sure if I created it. I don't know. I'm not a singer. But I know some physics, and I know how to save paper when it gets wet. At least now I do. I'm really happy with this. Oh, these are getting a bit dry now. I really like that effect. I like bled through. It's almost like those Polaroids. Whenever you, um, before you develop the Polaroid, you kind of like squish it a bit, and the chemicals get all pushed around. It's pretty cool. Look at this. The wood moisture meter kind of works. 11%. 10.8. Oh, look at that! That's so cool. You can obviously tell that these have been drying longer. Oh, that is cool. 24%. And these have been drying for a while. This one's a bit moist. 14%. These are pretty thick ones, though. So. 9.7%. Hmm. It's kind of interesting, but it also kind of makes me feel a little bad because. I noticed this stuff was on was in on the floor and the puddle like four days ago, but because I it was like 2 a.m. and I was getting ready to go to bed, but I was just checking to make sure the light was off in the basement. But we have like one small light, so you can kind of see stuff. And uh, I saw there was some like cans that fell, and it's like they're empty cans, like stuff that you use. And I was like, oh, there's no, some junk fell down in that in the puddle of water, but it's nothing big. Well, there was like so this was right underneath all of that stuff it was holding it down into the water so i felt bad because like i saw it and i just didn't feel like actually checking it out and uh if i did the the ink probably wouldn't have moved as much but for the it was probably down there for a couple days because i mean we don't go in the basement that much and so if after just a couple days this stuff comes to part like comes back to whatever it was like so easily it makes you wonder like how long could a book stay underwater that's an interesting idea because like if a book was lost for maybe a month there is a chance that you could rescue it and that would be cool if you could find something that was like really valuable and I don't mean like worth money but I just mean have like interesting information because it is unknown how much information that we have only in a few books because you know there's probably some interesting information in like some library books just somewhere that no one really looks at because just some other book but really when you, if you crack it open it'll have some interesting information or history that hasn't been recorded yet and if we lose that we lose the only r record of that i mean it's just kind of like a lot of silent movies are only on vhs and they don't really have good copies of them, and so 
uh, if we don't find those VHS tapes and convert them, we're not going to have any copy of it. And so, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like we still have a copy of, of some things, but it's trapped in an older format or in a, a long lost book, but not lost in like, well, it could be lost. Like, I'm sure there's many books just sitting in a barn somewhere, but just imagine how many, how many books, valuable books are lost in libraries. Maybe they have the wrong number on them. Maybe they just don't even have any code, code on them at all. Maybe no one even thinks to look for them. But they're the information we all want. Not all of it. It'd be helpful to have all that information. Yeah. It is cool how much over the past like 15 or 20 years we've been able to take information just dump it under the end of the internet and really collect everything into like the world's greatest library. It is amazing. Really amazing. Just found this one I dropped outside, but it dried up anyway. So that is a one-to-one -one schematic, a full-size schematic of an NES cartridge circuit board. I still have some of my uh, development cartridges that I built. I just take some game that I didn't want, like slalom or something, and I'd add a, a chip socket on it and I could program it. I never got around to though because I was just a kid. Not much better it's, uh, compared to these. A little bit, but that's all just a little bit. So honestly, I think taking these papers and putting something heavy on them, like a heavy book, would do far more once they're already dry. And I just introduced some creases, so that's not good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.